Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Malifaux and the final game for the Child in the Divergent Paths world event that Weird is running. To recap, the child's parents were cruelly killed by her devious puppet creations, and she has been rescued from the streets by Leviticus and his friendly friends, and being uh, she's been doing odd jobs for the lecherous old man. The local media has taken that rather the wrong way, and a vigilante mob have gathered outside of salvage and logistics or whatever his company's called. Arriving on the scene first are my Ten Thunders crew of uh, Lady Feng with On Wings of Wind and Vapormancy. No seismic claws for me because I can never get it to work. Mechanized Pork Chop because uh, Mei Feng has got to have Mechanized Pork Chop. Toshiro the Daimyo with Command the Graves of course. The Emberling, Chiaki the Niece, a rail worker and we've got a guild pathfinder and a katanaka sniper emerging from the shadows. Across the way, Lucius himself is leading a gang of um, uh, thugs. And this is probably off the record because there's a, uh, you know, a fair number of less than savoury types in this cruise. We've got a doppelganger. The scribe, Lucius Matheson, with On Wings of Darkness and Surprisingly Loyal. A Cillerid, oh god that Cillerid. A terracotta warrior, an ostringer, Mr. Queeg, an illuminated, and another ostringer. And yes, they're totally hiding away from my guns. Those sneaky neverborn. In terms of terrain, you probably know there's the the score by now. We've got a forest. These are all impassable blocking height, uh, whatever they appear to be. Three in most cases, I think. Uh, walls are just kind of severe terrain height one. Impassable tower. This here is Leviticus's workshop, a 6x6 six six building, and uh, it's a square, Imagine we've got imaginary lines that are blocking um, these bits here in the corners, so my dudes are really only just peeking out from uh, around the sides here. How the strategy works, every turn after the first, we score a point if the Inquisitive Child Marker is on our side of the table. The Inquisitive Child Marker starts within the building and is released once we interact with it, and we need to be in base contact with any part of the building. The opposing player to that who um, interacted to free the child gets to place the child in base contact with either of the three sides that the interacting player did not interact with. So if I was to interact with this side, then my opponent could place the child marker anywhere along these three other sides. Once the child has been sprung, anyone within one inch can do a one interact action to uh, move her four inches. The interactor will then take a two, three, four damage flip. And uh, spoilers, we forgot to do this pretty much the whole game. But I don't think it would really have actually mattered. So to let you in on my plan, well I've got my shooters up here and they're trying to plink people off as they come up and approach the building. I would love to get my trapper out here on the first turn and then put down a trap just to gum him up and to make uh, interacting on this side more difficult. You might notice that my crew is geared towards summoning from Toshiro. And I'm planning to pump out Komenu, surround the building as best as I can. And that'll mean wherever the child pops out, I should have a good chance of uh, snagging it. I've got Frame for Murder on my pork chop because uh, <laughs> people seem to like to kill it. So it's going to make some scrap for uh, Toshiro and Mei Feng to use and then just dive into the middle of his crew and try to go down in a blaze of glory. Neutralize the leaders in a pool, uh, so I'm going to be a bit more careful with Mei Feng. And I'm thinking I'm going to use her to hunt down his scheme runners whilst the rest of my crew concentrates on exhausting him and then just trying to outkill Lucius's crew. Let's see how it goes. Turn one, hello good hand, I think there's going to be some Kamenu coming out today. I get the initiative, which was really quite important, I felt. Changed my plans up somewhat, somewhat by Mei Feng going first, running out to here and then double venting steam. My concern is that he's got Ostringers and they're just going to plink off my uh, my two shooters. So now at a double negative, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy to let him try. The Embling has moved out and cooled down to drop some scrap, staying within Mei Feng's aura. And as the turn progresses, the pork shop runs up over here, drops another scrap, and then walks over here. Toshiro promptly summons two Kamenu, makes this one fast with his war fan to counter the slow of being summoned. Chiaki's plan was to try to cleansing death and remove slow from this one, but she failed and then just moved up over here. 
this is how the board looks as we progress. I'm maneuvering my Kaminoan rail worker to be over, you know, to take this flank, I'm trying to wait for him to activate uh, as many things as possible before I move the Pathfinder out for his mission. And for my opponent's part, he's using the Ostringers to move things around and get people up towards the centre. The Pathfinder makes his move, runs out to here, drops a uh, trap slap bang in the middle of all those dudes. I top deck the card I need, it's just, uh, my luck is on, is running hot this game. I then shoot Queeg, I think with a severe damage, and blast onto the doppelganger and Lucius, just freaking brilliant. An Ostringer tries to get revenge but can't quite bring the Pathfinder down. My not slowed Komenu runs up here to get into position for next turn. And my opponent Silurid fails its leap. I think he was trying to get over to the building and interact with it, bring out the child. That would have been a bad idea, I feel. As I would have just put it here or here and then had it nice and safe and snug because I don't think he's got anything left to pull anything tricksy. I could be wrong. Oh, we should notice, by the way, that the Terracotta Warrior has done his thing to the Silurid, so now the Silurid can pass off damage to the Terracotta. And that's how we end turn one. I've pushed uh, Mei Feng over here with her Wings of Wind. I'm thinking to wait this flank and then have the pig charge down this one to try to goad him into sending more attacks this way. Turn two, I had to stone this because my hand was awful, and that will have to do. Right off the bat, one of his Ostringers kills my guild pathfinder unfortunately but the Kameno takes revenge by charging Lucius and red jokering the damage haha <laughs> this is going all my way it looks like I then use my zero action to place over here I'm trying to block the doppelganger in so that she doesn't have an easy way to slip through on this flank pig and the scribe get involved I think I was too far to charge Lucius uh, so I just double walked and then tried to use my burning pork chops ability which failed it always fails but that would have been nice. I'm trying to use the pig to block him in and uh, make it a, a you know something he has to kill. Otherwise, he could lose his precious master. But a big mistake is not is putting it so far uh, too far forwards. If I'd have kept it back here, it would have blocked his silly red's ability to leap out into this kind of zone. And I'm going to pay for that. I'm feeling like I'm in quite a strong position. And with my activation control, I'm trying to delay bringing the child out as long as I can. I was thinking the sniper could run up and uh, interact with this side of the building so that he had to place it, uh, you know, on either side of here. I want to get one of these dudes up around this range first, so then Mayfeng can rail walk to uh, wherever he, whichever side he places it, and then start bringing it back. But my opponent is too cunning. He uses his Ostringer to move around uh, the Illuminated, blocking off my ability to interact with this side, and threatening a charge on the sniper. I decided to try to move the sniper out here so that he can uh, now see the Ostringer and try to lure the Illuminated out to the side, allowing me to slip through. But Curses and Sidiously Mad does not take the bait and instead just simply interacts with the uh, with the thing to bring out the child. I decide to place it over here because I'm kind of blocking things up and Mayfang won't have any trouble leaping uh, to this marker and then stowing her safely away. However, the frickin' Sillerid uses its companion leaps over to here, walks over and moves the child four inches this way. Before my opponent can make any more tricky shit happen, I uh, go with Mei Feng, rail walking to this uh, marker, then rail walking to the pig, uh, walking out, allowing her to interact with the child and push it back to her, to its starting position. A big positioning mistake was moving her over here, because you know, I've got to try to get her out of uh, engagement to be able to interact with the thing. I should have moved her over here. Uh, which would have blocked the child's path towards the centre. But I wasn't expecting my opponent's next move, which was to use Lucius to give the Sillerid all kinds of crazy activations and push the child all the way over here. The Sillerid's interacted three times with the child now, which I think technically means it should be dead from the uh, weak damage. But the Terracotta has still got its condition on, so that wouldn't have stopped the, uh, the thing had my opponent wished. As we continue, my uh, other Kameno gets involved, we're just trying to gum things up. He's uh, desperately trying to get rid of the trap because it's causing a real problem to him by blocking the child's route through the path he wants it to take and making him take lots of tests. Chiaki gets upfield and uh, makes the Sillerid insignificant. Doppelganger takes down the trap with Queeg's uh, whip and the Illuminated exhausts my uh, Kameno, which I kind of figured was coming. 
Dashiro goes, summons another Kamenu, three Kamenu! I don't even have that many, so I've uh, summoned Kang the Kamenu, and uses his zero action to make the rail worker fast and push him, which was just fantastic, because that allowed him to walk and then double interact to give the uh, illuminated the exhaust condition. And Kang the Kamenu has walked around here through Chiaki and then placed himself in base space with Lucius. I'm trying to gum up his center and basically these uh, all of these guys are quite injured. So I'm just going to try to ramp up the pressure as much as I can and try to finish them off next turn. Then it doesn't matter that he's going to score a point for the child this turn. I can, you know, once, once these guys are down I can move it back um, at my leisure pretty much. It has also occurred to me that the Silurid would make a fine frame for murder target, so I'm going to try to leave it alone. And this is how we end up. We both score for exhaust, my opponent scores for the child being on his half. Turn 3, that's more like it. I lose the initiative, Lucius teleports around, makes people take interact actions, allows them to take them whilst they're engaged, and the child ends up over here, which is a bit annoying. We get into a total mosh pit here. Kamenu are flying around everywhere. Mayfeng's throwing out flying kicks and uh, trying to bring down Mr. Queeg, Master Queeg. I also try to vent steam on... Uh, not vent steam. I think I actually do vent steam with uh, one of the triggers, which I subsequently forget. But I try to use my steam breath on the Terracotta Warrior, intending to blast onto uh, Lucius and the Scribe. The Scribe's making the Terracotta uh, defense 7. I'm attack 7. I focus. Just need to, uh, just need to beat it by 1. And that should mean I'll kill the scribe, damage Lucius more, damage my pig, which would be good, making it more of a tempting target, but he cheats the Red Joker to stop me. And uh, yeah, that was a good move. As things progress, the Kamino trade blows with the uh, Neverborn. The scribe goes down, not quite sure how, but uh, I think he, it was some kind of sacrifice to get a soul, soul stone. But it manages to red tape the pig, which is kind of annoying. I start to lose Kamino as the Siderid leaps into the center of things. And another one goes down, those offspring is a Fucking annoying. Chiaki sees a gap, dives forward, and makes the doppelganger insignificant, meaning that she can only just move up to uh, engage the child. The rail worker and the illuminated trade blows. There's no way to, I can get past their uh, that that healing. I don't fancy the sniper's chances of shooting into this engagement, so I uh, take a pot shot or so at the uh, the Ostringer, do a little bit of damage. Toshiro gets up over here, ready to start helping things out, and I think my pork shop is uh, exhausted. Uh, Lucius, and I think the Terracotta Warrior has done the same to Mayfeng. Turn 4, come on! It's make or break time. I think I managed to get the initiative, and I really need to kill his crew this turn, and start scoring some points for the child. And I'm going to start with Lucius, because once he's down, then at least some of his crew can't interact while engaged, and that's been killing me. So I rail walk to the pig, place myself on the other side, and kick Lucius, who uh, discards cards, put me on negatives, and I didn't realise he could do that. So, fuck it, looks like I can't uh, get him dead this turn. I instead focus and steam breath the doppelganger, who takes a severe damage, blasting onto the terracotta warrior, blasting onto the Silurid, and setting them on fire. At this point, I've kind of changed my thinking, and uh, I'm thinking that the terracotta might be the um, frame for murder target. I don't quite understand how he works. I'm thinking that it's uh, he can take damage on behalf of another thing, in which case, uh, you know, killing getting him killed is a piece of cake, and that might be what my opponent's up to, but uh, reading the rules, the damage counts as being caused by the condition, so I think he would be sacrificed, and so not give up frame for murder points if he gave if he did this. But yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm thinking at the moment, is, ooh, which one of these two is it? Just burn them both. Unfortunately, Lucius goes and gets his uh, everyone can interact in whilst engaged or a thing off. Uh, my Kamenu falls to an Ostringer, and something gets pushed, uh, something... Uh, targets the child to get her over here, and uh, I'm seeing the game slipping away from me. It started so well! Toshiro gets me another Kamenu, <laughs> but it's not enough, and this was quite funny. I think, so I think one of the Ostringers told the other one to um, move the child, or move into range to move the child, because apparently Ostringers don't walk. The child ends up getting pushed right to the back board edge, and the Kamenu leaps, and Red Jokers the damage on the Ostringer, killing it in one hit. They're so freaking good. The Emberling exhausts the Illuminated and then puts uh, extra burning on the Silurid, making sure it's going to die at the end of the turn. And the Silurid is in the mood for something a bit spicy and gobbles up the uh, the Emberling. The Rail Worker continues his futile assault on the Illuminated. Basically, I'm missing one hit and getting the other one in. 
and then he activates and just heals it back up. It's so annoying. And then he marks my uh, my dude for death. Uh, not well, whatever it is, it exhausts my uh, rail worker. The sniper's being a bit useless to be honest. It's uh, taking pot shots at Ostringers when really I think I should have tried to get him involved. Although uh, you know the, the illuminated is being a massive pain, and I probably should have just tried to ignore it and uh, go for other things. Curse you, illuminated! Yeah, this game is looking like it's going badly, but I'm not going to give up. So I send Chiaki running all the way for the backfield, followed by the pig. I'm leaving a scrap and construct trail for Mayfeng to be able to jump over into the backfield next turn. And I'm leaving the pig tantalizingly here. Just just come on, just fucking attack it, Lucius. Mmm, bacon. In a tin. And at the end of the turn, Mayfeng remembers to push over here when we both score our last points for exhaust. I think the Terracotta Warrior was killed by the pig, and uh, yep, so apparently he wasn't the frame for murder. And the Celerid dies to burning, and of course you all know that he was the frame for murder target. Very good play by my opponent with those two, because he could uh, just choose to keep the Celerid alive or kill it as he wished, pretty much. Turn 5, my opponent refuses to stop being an asshole, and puts his Ostringer here to stop me in... Um, Moving the child, the Kalmenu brings him down, allowing Mayfeng to rail walk train in and um, push the child up over to here. My rail worker pins the illuminated, and my opponent's worried that I'm trying to uh, take prisoner. So he uses Lucius to place the uh, the illuminated away from, uh, from trouble and get the two to stand next to each other to make sure I couldn't score full points. Great move. I actually do have the 11 of crows that I need, I've got no soul stones left, to summon an Ashigaru from this marker, and uh, I, so I could have could have done Take Prisoner had I taken it. But it's not very often I have any of my crew left at the end of the games, particularly against opponents uh, as uh, good as uh, Insidiously Mad. So I tend not to take schemes that uh, require me to be alive at the end of the game. <laughs> Clearly this crew, with all its summoning and uh, durable models, is one I should trust to last. So in the end I used Chiaki to push the child over to the pig, the pig to push the child over to here and then push it again to Toshiro, and then Toshiro pushed it around over here and then again over to my side of the board. We couldn't be bothered with damage at this point because we've forgotten it for the rest of the game, but short of, the only thing that could have broken that chain would have been red joking the damage on the pig on the second push, on the first push, sorry. So there you have it, that is the end of the game. The Neverborn scored 3 points for the strategy, 3 points for Exhaust, and no points for Frame for Murder on Silverid. The Ten Thunders scored 1 point for the strategy, yeah! Bet you didn't think I was going to get one. 3 points for Exhaust, and no points for Frame for Murder on the Pig. Just a brilliant game. I uh, felt I was in really good position in the first turns, but then uh, my opponent showed me. Just what a crew well tailored to the scheme pool can do, and uh, I mean Lucius is pretty tough, he's resource intensive, really intensive, but if you've got the skill to manage it, he's got a lot of tools for interact heavy games. Pretty pleased with the uh, flexibility of uh, durability and speed of my Mayfeng crew. Disappointed it, uh, you know, it didn't seem to have the hitting power that I needed. What I really needed was sparks instead of the, uh, the sniper I think, but I did like my double shooter uh, deployment. So yeah, I mean, what can you do? In the end, I think my opponent only killed my summons. I think I still had my entire starting crew, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I still lost. But that's Malifaux. So yeah, this game was a ton of laughs. My opponent was great fun, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>